Preston Wood families, we are so glad you're joining us online for an amazing worship experience where this month we are focusing on upside down. Upside down, like this? Nope. Like this? Not quite. I've got an idea. Let's play a game to practice some upside down ideas. Here's how it works. I'm going to show you some pictures upside down and you have to try and figure them out. Let's do the first one together. What do you see? That's right, the Eiffel Tower. Let's try the rest. Are you ready? That's right, Mount Rushmore. Yeah, the Great Wall of China. Uh-huh, the Space Needle. Yep, that's the Taj Mahal. Oh yeah, Big Ben. Oh yeah, that's Prestonwood. Wait, that's, that's the Plano campus? And yep, that's North. Good job, that was a fun game, guys. We are kind of upside down right now. Maybe you're having to do school in your bedroom or go to church online in your PJs. Maybe you're spending a lot of time with your family and by now, someone might be getting on your nerves. That's why we're learning about putting others first. It's called humility. Humility is our life path, putting others first because Jesus put you first. That might seem a little upside down from the way things normally go. Normally, we wanna get the best things for ourselves. Normally, we want to put ourselves first. But Jesus showed us a better way. He showed us what real humility looks like. When we remember how Jesus treated people, we can follow his lead. We can turn things upside down and treat others the way we want to be treated. The Bible tells us in Philippians, don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you're proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2.3 Everywhere that I go, you're there with me Even in the night when I cannot see I know you're by my side and I will be just fine Oh God, you're always good to me I will say thank you, thank you I will live my life To praise you, praise you And lift you high Every night and day I'll follow in your ways I wanna say thank you, thank you I wanna say thank you, God Every breath that I take you give to me Every brand new day is a blessing
it's Kathy, and I am so glad that you guys are here with us this weekend. Our Bible lesson today comes from Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 13. While you're turning to Luke 24, let's recap a bit of what it looked like just a couple weeks ago. Just a few weeks ago, we celebrated Easter weekend. Remember that early on that Sunday morning, a group of ladies went to the tomb and they found it was empty. Jesus had risen from the dead. Those women ran and told Jesus the followers what had happened. Well, Luke 24, 13 takes place that exact same day. Scripture tells us that two of Jesus' followers were on the road to Emmaus that very day. Now, one of these men we know was named Cleopas. Scripture doesn't record the name of the other man. Now, Emmaus was about seven miles from Jerusalem. So these two had plenty of time to talk about all the events that had happened for the last few days. Seven miles. We'll make it by dinner time. Do you believe it? All that stuff the women said when they came back from the garden. I don't really feel like talking. What if it's true? Have you ever seen a dead man come back to life? Lazarus? You didn't see that. You heard about well, it. Well, lots of people saw it. As these two men walked along the dirt road, talking about all that had happened, a third man joined them along the road. This man was Jesus himself. But Cleopas and the other man, they didn't recognize him. Verse 16 says, but they were kept from recognizing him. Jesus is right there with these two men, and they don't even know it. Oh, don't look, but fast walker behind us. Uh, just get over, he'll pass. He's slowing down. You know him? I'm not looking. That makes it weird. Nope. Don't know him. Great. Now he knows we're talking about him. Way to make it awkward. Hi. Hi. So what are you talking about as you walk along? Cleopas and the other man were so surprised by this question that they stopped dead in their tracks. Stunned and saddened, they responded. Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know? Don't you know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? What things? What things? The two were shocked. How could anyone from Jerusalem not have heard about Jesus? So they began to share with this stranger what had happened. What do we do? Go with it. <clears throat> the things about Jesus of Nazareth, he was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did. But the chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. They nailed him to a cross. Yeah. We'd hoped he was the one who was going to set Israel free. This all happened three days ago. But early this morning, something crazy happened. Uh, some of the women who followed him went to the tomb, but... They didn't find his body. They saw angels who said Jesus was alive. And then some of our friends went to the tomb. They saw it empty, too. How would this stranger that Cleopas and the other man just met take in all this news? Would they believe them? Would he laugh at them? How foolish you are. Excuse me? How long it takes you to believe all that the prophets said? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? Uh. Uh, what? Cleopas and his friend were floored. Here this stranger had asked them a question, and yet it was this stranger, who we know is Jesus, begins to teach them about scripture and the prophecy of Jesus. Luke 24, 27 says it this way, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scripture concerning himself. So you see, things were supposed to happen this way. This is incredible. You're saying that God has been planning this day for thousands of years? Yeah, but if that's true, then you're saying Jesus is alive? As they realized the amazing truth to what this stranger had spoken to them, they realized that they had reached the town of Emmaus, and Jesus acted as if he were going to keep traveling down the road. So Cleopas and his friend invited this stranger to stop for the evening and to have dinner with them. And so Jesus agreed to stay and to have dinner with them. As they were at the table, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and then broke it and gave it to them. Immediately, their eyes were opened and they realized that this stranger that had walked with them, that had talked with them all day, was not a stranger at all. It was Jesus. And immediately, Jesus vanished from their sight. 
these men were so excited that they couldn't wait to tell the others what had happened. So they immediately headed back to Jerusalem to tell the others what had happened to them. That was real, right? Jesus broke this bread. He gave it to us. I think deep down I knew it. He explains to us what the scriptures meant. Weren't we excited as he talked with us on the road? We have to tell everyone. Right now. These two men raced back to Jerusalem and told the disciples what had happened. They were amazed to discover how much bigger God's story was than they had ever imagined. God's plan is so much bigger than we can see. Sometimes things happen that, well, we don't understand, well, like this coronavirus. But we can trust that God is in control. Thousands of years ago, God made a plan to save people from their sins by sending Jesus as a sacrifice for our sins. His plan is for all of us to be with him in heaven. But the only way to heaven is through a personal relationship with Jesus. And that's as easy as A, B, C. The first thing you have to do is you must admit that you're a sinner and that you're in need of a savior. You can't do it on your own or by being good. B, believe in Jesus and believe that he lived, that he died, and that he rose again, just as the Bible says. And finally, C, confess that Jesus is Lord of your life and is your savior and as you commit to follow him for the rest of your life. Take some time as a family this week and try and see how God has been working and moving in your home through the last few weeks with working from home or learning from home or even sports being canceled in ways that you might not even notice God could be working. Maybe it's with getting closer to a sibling. Maybe it's appreciating a friend or a neighbor more. The question is, how have you seen God move and work over the last few weeks in your family? Hey families, thanks so much for joining us online this weekend. Be sure to keep checking our social media sites for great challenges, fun, and resources throughout the entire week. Bye.